What's up, guys? This is our second podcast in all kinds of weather. Once again, I am Neil Shulman, the editor. We have two newcomers to the... Well, no, we have one newcomer to the podcast. I'm sorry. We have Neil Blackman back from um, from last week when we did the coaching talk, who, is, who would be the next head coach of Florida. And we have one of our other staff writers, Joey Vizi. He is on for the first time. So... Why don't you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves before we get going tonight? Yeah, I'm Neil Blackman, uh, lawyer. Um, graduated the University of Florida twice. Uh, on a big soccer website. And um, really had the impact to contribute to uh, the Rampart of the Weather. I've been going to Florida football games, either as a student or a player or just a fan since. 're uh, making me feel like a little baby with all your accomplishments you have done so much and I am a 20 year old college junior who has none of those things to list on his resume but just like you guys uh, I love gator football gator basketball I like gator baseball too and I support all the gator sports but football is pretty much my forte and uh, the season, so far has not gotten off to a very strong start. Will Muschamp is pretty much fired. I think it's fair to say, uh, barring something of Herculean proportions, he will not be back next year. And, and I'm talking like beat Florida State by four touchdowns in Tallahassee and win, and run the table. So, something like that might save his job. Otherwise, he's gone. But there is a chance for Florida to salvage some respect from this season, and it will give Will Muschamp the faintest glimmer of hope as he continues on to coach the rest of the season for Florida. If Florida were to win, their opponent is a very good Georgia team. It probably is the best Georgia team in Will Muschamp's four years here. Now, having said that, Todd Gurley will not be playing for them. But there is another guy that can run the ball pretty well, as we saw against Missouri. His name is Nick Chubb. Now, I see Chubb as a slightly slower version of Todd Gurley. He's extremely dangerous nonetheless. What kind of impact do you think he will have in this game? Well, I mean, it's it's pretty amazing that somebody that was sort of an afterthought after Gurley left Missouri Um, 
How about you, Joey? What do you think uh, Chubb does that makes him so dangerous? Well, first of all, let's start out with uh, Nick Chubb will cross for 345 yards in the last two games. That girl is down. So the drop-off is um, minimal. It's not, dare I say, um, maybe even a little less of a drop-off because um, Nick Chubb is basically taking over the offense away from Hudson Mason. Hudson Mason hasn't had to put the game on his shoulders at all this year because he went from Gurley to Chubb. And ironically, uh, Sony Michelle is a higher recruit this year than Nick Chubb was out of high school, but Michelle's been out with an injury for the last uh, three, three weeks. And um, he might not be back for a couple more weeks. Um, Nick Chubb is he's rushed for 569 yards on a year and he's averaging 5.7 yards a carry and um, he has 5 touchdowns and he barely plays before Gurley's out so a majority of all his statistics have occurred in the last two games and it's absolutely incredible to see an 18 year old with the physicality if you just go look at him with his pads off and the physique that he has, he's, there I see, very Herschel Walker-esque in his physique, the way he runs, and there I say he will be a Heisman candidate in the next three years. Um, I don't know how Mark Rick and Mike Bobo are going to get these guys, um, but they are just a, are just a train track of star running backs that he's gotten in the last three seasons. Um, and if you look at Todd Gurley, he was a four-star in high school. He didn't even have an offer from Florida, didn't have an offer from Alabama. Um, the only, there were only three SEC schools that offered Todd Gurley, and he was in North Carolina, was Tennessee, uh, Kentucky, and Georgia, I believe. So he was kind of the diamond in the rough of that class. And it has to be round two of that. Nick Chubb wasn't talked about much last year. Um, Georgia fans had high hopes for him, and he certainly is just an outstanding running back, and he's taken over 90% of Georgia's offense the last few years. Yeah, there's, to me there's no doubt that Chubb is capable of doing damage. But I don't, I don't like it when people compare him to Gurley. He, he can spell Todd Gurley. But there are differences. You know, he's he's not as fast. One of you mentioned that he's not as fast. You know, he, he gets in a he gets in a foot race like the one Todd Gurley was in last year. At, you know, when he caught that screen pass and just torched the Gators, caught the ball on like the SEC logo at midfield and just took off, and no Gator caught him. Nick Chubb is not that fast. He's fast, but he's not gonna break away like that. He may get loose by breaking tackles because he is tough to, to bring down. But he's not going to win straight foot races like that, especially not against guys like Vernon Hargreaves. But there is a bigger issue at hand for Florida. Yes, they have to stop Nick Chubb. They cannot let him go off like no Sean Marino did in 2007, uh, or they're going to lose. But it's more than just stopping Nick Chubb, and it's more than just stopping Keith Marshall if he's able to play. He's questionable right now. The big thing is Florida has to win the battle in the trenches. They have to win the line of scrimmage. I mean, the front seven's got to get some push or they're gonna or they're screwed. They've got to stack the box. They've got to make Hudson Mason beat them through the air. And I'll get to that in a little bit more detail later on. But for now, let's just focus on this. Can Florida win the line of scrimmage? Because that's going to be the key to everything. Can they dominate the line of scrimmage like the way they have to? Well, that's actually going to be the difference of the game. Um, Florida has 
coming into the game, Antonio Morrison has 52 tackles this season, and uh, new, uh, newly added starter defensive end now, McAllister, has four sacks on the season, and um, he barely played the first several games. Um, uh, that is going to be the test of the game, is can Florida penetrate the offensive line of Georgia, who's been playing the last two games like nobody's business. And that's another thing. They've stepped up to help Chubb out. Gurley did all the work when he was on. I mean, Gurley didn't need the holes. Gurley would get into the second level and be gone. Um, Chubb is getting holes the size of craters. And um, that's one thing I noticed against Missouri was that Missouri's defensive line and uh, Marcus Golden and uh, those guys, they didn't have any answers for George's offensive line. And and Dante Fowler Jr. has to have the game of his life on Saturday, and he needs to be in the backfield because the only chance that Florida has, the only chance that Florida has of pulling the upset is you have to make Georgia one-dimensional and you have to make him a passing team. I, Hudson Mason is not good enough, in my opinion. When I lost him against Nebraska in the bowl game last year, he did not look good because Nebraska took Todd Gurley out of the game. Nebraska forced Hudson Mason to throw the ball last year in the bowl game, and he looked atrocious when he, the game was on his shoulders. And that's what Florida has to do on Saturday. They have to force Hudson Mason into passing situations, second and long, third and long. They have to create third and seven, third and six, third and seven, third and eight, every single time Georgia has the ball to make Hudson Mason throw into coverage. And I think that is going to be a key. If both the defensive line and their linebackers can get into the defense, into the offensive backfield and disrupt the running game, I think that Florida definitely has a chance to pull the upset. But that, that is the only way, because if Nick Chubb has a day like he's had the last two weeks against Arkansas and Missouri, Florida will lose by, by three touchdowns. Well, I want to... I want to mention something before I let uh, Neil Blackman speak. Uh, you, you mentioned the bowl game uh, against Nebraska, the Gator Bowl. Yes, you're right. He did not look fantastic, but that was last year, and he's gotten a bit better. Now, is he a Heisman candidate now? No. But he doesn't make some of the stupid mistakes he made in that Gator Bowl. I mean, he, at least now he's not locking on his first target. You know, he's he's giving more receivers chances to get open. He's being more patient. He's still making mistakes. Okay, there's there's no question he is. He made a couple of big ones against South Carolina, but I, I don't I don't want it to make it seem like Hudson Mason is I don't know who's a who's a bad a really bad quarterback to compare him to. Uh, it's that Florida's played like the uh, Brogan Roback of Eastern Michigan. I don't I don't want to I don't want to make it seem like he's that level. He's a decent quarterback. He can make Florida pay with the right matchups. So I agree with everything else he said. We gotta get pressure on him. We gotta force him to beat us. But he can if we bust coverage and make a mistake of our own. And now, um, Hudson what? Hudson Mason is averaging seven yards per completion. Yeah. That means that Georgia doesn't trust him to throw the ball down the field, so they're giving him big and dumb passes, flat route, screens. That's what they're giving him. He has a sixty-nine point two percent completion percentage, and he's averaging seven yards per pass. Right, but some of that's because he's throwing screen passes to guys like Gurley and Chubb, and why would you not? Those guys are beasts. Why would, and, you know, sometimes they get stuff for one, two-yard gains, and that, that comes off it, too. But, but fair enough. I mean, he's not, he's not going to throw a 60-yard bomb, but I'm saying if we, if we keep missing coverages, we could give up one of those screen passes that uh, Murray hit to Gurley that went for 75 and a touchdown last year. That's what I'm saying we can't afford to do. But anyway, um, Neil, back to you. Do you think Florida can win the line of scrimmage and get to Hudson Mason? 